So I'm going to do a review on this little wither station thing here. I've never had one before, so it should be interesting. So this is given to me for free by Banggood. Thank you much Banggood. So make sure you go and check out the links down below to this item or anything else you may buy from Banggood. Um, I have an affiliate relationship with them, so if you buy anything I get a bit of a commission, that sort of thing. It doesn't cost you any more, but I get a bit of benefit from it. We'll take a look at this thing and um, see what I think of it. I mean, I've got no idea. I've never had it with a station before, so it's going to be a new experience. This one's got a colour screen, which goes in the house. I think you get extra sensors for it and stuff like that as well. Weather, obviously. Humidity, temperature, rainfall, UV, solar radiation, wind speed and direction, and atmospheric pressure. Let's get the thing out. Now, I've had this open already before when I did my mailbag video. So it's not packed properly because it's just what I shoved back into the box. So you have to excuse that. If you want to see it was packed, you can look at my mailbag video, which I did not long ago. I'm pretty sure this will come out after my bag video. Mm. Oh. What I do like about it is they're being polystyrene, they've got cardboard packaging. Very environmentally friendly. When you can use cardboard, why wouldn't you? Anyway, we've got the screen here. Let's unpack this. Let's put the remote down, shall we? So there's a screen, so you've got a stand on it, and there you go, there's the ports on the side here, power, USB and SD card, so it looks like, 5 volt, power centre positive is it, there's a dot there, it doesn't say it was positive or negative, well that's helpful, obviously the meaning of the dots was lost on them, <laughs> anyway, right. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon, that sort of stuff, if you like review videos or anything gadgety or electronics based. I, um, if you're not familiar with my channel, then make sure you subscribe. Uh, okay, so we've got a collection cup for the rain water. We've got a wind speed um, paddle, I suppose. And here we have a wind direction paddle. go. I'm not quite sure how you tell it which way is which is it? Yeah it's a squared off shaft. It's got a flat on it. That one's round. That means you probably can't get them mixed up because there are two rotational shafts on this thing. And here we have a power adapter which is a 5 volt adapter obviously because it's a 5 volt power supply. This is also for the house side of things. And that's at 1 amp. Well I doubt it uses an amp but you never know. We have some mounting hardware here because it's designed to go on top of a pole. So you've got that, got some nuts and a little spanner in there. Might be a sensor. With a station transmitter. That takes a couple of AA batteries, it looks like. Plenty of them, so that's not a problem. Yeah, it's just a sensor. There we go, it's got sensing and stuff through that slot in there. So you can hang it on a wall somewhere if you want to get temperature measurements. Temperature, humidity and pressure sensor it does. Okay. It's just packaging materials. Nothing else I know, so let's get this piece out. And we get a little cable tie, obviously for well, something. Anyway, this is upside down. It goes this way up. It's got a flat on that shaft there, so that's the um, this one here goes on there, the direction indicator. And the other one, it's a round shaft. That means you can't get them mixed up. Well, I suppose you could potentially put this one on here. But then you wouldn't be able to get the other one here, obviously, because that'd be a bit stupid. And then we've got the let's get the capture device out. So this cup goes in here. So this is the obviously the collection cup for the water when it's raining, and it dips into here. We've got this balance here, which will actually tip out. This senses when it tips, so this will go in here and probably just lock in there like that. It does. So I guess you can take that off so you can clean it easily. I guess so. Um, it doesn't lock on there that hard though. It's actually really loose. It shouldn't fall out unless maybe you get super high winds or something. But Maybe that requires something to help hold it in a bit tighter. The problem with making things out of plastics is that shrinkage rates can cause different fitments. So if the machine runs a bit slower when they make it, you find it's, the fitments are a bit more closely controlled. It runs a bit faster, you get more shrinkage and sizes change. 
bit of plastics information for you in case you care. So am I going to read the instructions? No! Let's uh, put some batteries in. I do know it's got a stick on here saying about not uncovering this until you stick the batteries in it. So I'm going to stick the batteries in it. So the batteries I'm going to put in aren't the best batteries. Uh, they're a bit rubbishy, cheap rubbish batteries, you know, just bulk pack things. They'll do for the time being. I'll change them again later on. You've got an LED indicator under here now. Okay. Let's go off again. And now it's pulsing. I just to let you know it's got power without draining the battery down too much. You know, a little pulse there. Remove this sticker, press reset button to start sensor operation. Over here, there's a reset button. So let's take the sticker off. There's the solar panel. And let's push the reset button with something. I'll push it for a few seconds in case it matters. Alright, could be the instructions of course, but I'm not going to bother. So let's put these on. So that's the round shaft one. Okay. I'm barely on camera. So the same on this one. It's also got a locking screw on it. I should check make sure they're out first, shouldn't I? Should have done. Right, it's got a flat on there. So I just have to line up the flat. There we go. That was easy. Okay, that's locked on. Yep. So what I should probably do is just go and sit this outside somewhere where it's going to be getting a bit of sun and weather and then we'll go and hook this up and see what happens. Let's put some batteries in this too. Just giving something. So let's peel this film off on the close up. Ready? Right, so I've got that popped up outside. On top of something, it's getting a bit of a breeze and it's actually raining a little bit as well, so that's quite good. Maybe it will be enough to actually trigger the sensor yet, yeah, I don't know, because it's probably not raining that hard. So let's get the screen hooked up. Now this has got a smaller size connector on here, it's not the 2.1mm, it's a different size. Which is a shame, it's got 2.1s everywhere. I'm not sure what is that, 1.8 or 1.6 or something? Oh, I don't know. Um, let's measure it. So this, yes, I'm not using the right point, but this is flat. 3.4 mil outside diameter. And I don't think I can measure the hole, can I? 1 mil. 1.1, 1.2-ish. Yeah, kind of 1.2. If I measure this one here, I'm getting like 1.9 there. So, yeah, 2.1 there. So that's the standard type, and obviously the outside is 5.4 mil. All right, so significantly different. So it's about 1mm or 1.1mm or something like that. I don't know. It's around that kind of number anyway. Maybe 1.2. Yeah, not the best thing to measure it with, but it will do. Gives you an idea. It's not a standard 2.1mm. So I need to get a uh, death adapter. I happen to have a few of those lying around. As luck would have it. There's one. I'll plug this screen in and we'll see what we get. Plug power into here. And maybe my connection is not very good. Yes, it is not very good. Here we go. Right, that's a nice display. Well, there you go, that's what it's showing. So, uh, what are we looking at here? Well, it's also getting a temperature from somewhere. It is getting a signal. It's a bit weak, but it's getting one. It is kind of blocked by a lot of other things where it's placed so it's not the best location between here and there it's got a lot of things in between like my test gear and lots of metal and stuff like that so it is getting a signal though wind speed meters per second indoor temperature and humidity let's see what it flicks around to here we go 23.9 it matches up 63 percent so that's obviously communicating uv index yeah well you know <laughs> um also, I'm going to need to set up some of this other stuff too. 105.3, that's what's on here for pressure. Oh, yeah, it seems to be working. 
directional for the wind direction. Yep, yeah, that agreed with what I saw when I was outside, so that matches up. Excellent. Um, now, I've got these things here, I've got no idea what they all do. Yeah, there's a settings button. What do we have? Degree C, yeah, that's what I want, obviously. Absolute pressure. Rainfall season January. Well, that's not right. Is that touch screen? No, I don't think it was. Over there. How do we get there? Down, yep. Yeah, January. Well, that's not right. Um, probably our heaviest rainfall was probably around September. August, September around then is probably the most rainy time from my perspective. It may be wrong on data, but anyway, that's probably around then. I'll say, I'll say September. I think I'm pretty sure it's most rain is around September. Or we have big storms in January, but we don't always have that in the summer. Where the serving set that up? I've got no idea how to do any of that stuff yet. Wi Fi scan. So I can do Wi Fi configuration to get that without communicating. So hours, minutes, seconds, day, month, year, that's fine. Pascal meters a second, rainfall units, millimeters, solar, rad units, watts per meter squared. Multi channel sensors, well, I've only got this and that's already configured, so that's all fine. Okay, let's keep going down. Oh, that's up, on down. Should we have a look in here to see what's actually in here with the server? Uh, select, here we go. On the ground. You can become a weather station, so it's got a record of the location and stuff like that, so that's pretty cool. I will actually do this. I will actually go through and do this. I won't probably do it on camera, but um, I will actually set all this stuff up and actually um, configure that. That'd be pretty cool. Wi-Fi scan, I'm going to go into that right now. Just be checking for Wi-Fi networks, not a big deal. Dark background, yep, prefer that. Set up more. Calibrations. Moisture sensor for soil. That could be a white handy, actually I should get one though. Multi-channel T and H calibration, so temperature and humidity. Okay. Well that's all pretty easy to do, isn't it? So what's this one do from here? Oh, different display types. Shows everything it's getting. That's pretty cool. Minimax values. Charting as well. Oh that's nice. Channel datas, well. Yeah, I've got no idea um, what to do here. I mean, I really probably should read the manual. I probably should. Channels. Otherwise, I've only got one set configured. I probably don't need to worry about that. Switching light to dark mode. I think I prefer dark mode, actually. Yeah, I prefer dark mode. Is that brightness? I think it's getting brighter, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's brightness. I don't like to run things flat out. Like you know, sure it really stands out, but the backlight will, will age a lot quicker. So I prefer to have things at a moderate level. So here we go. UV index one currently. Time format. Let's go into time format. Date and time setup. Here we go. Let's do this. Uh, time. Okay. So it's currently. Uh, just after one. It's about 11 minutes past one. That'll do. Okay, and time server synchronization. That's pretty cool. Uh, date. I need to change that as well. What is the date today? 3rd of 6th. 3rd, 4th. Fourth, yes, it's all right. Fourth, 2020. Cool. And time zone. Well, that's definitely wrong. Uh, try to get it up. Auckland, Wellington. Here we go. That's where I am. I will be doing that, and I will be doing that. Um, select. Yeah, once I won't be able to do that time server thing. Not until I can figure the Wi-Fi. Actually, I might go and reconfigure the Wi-Fi. Okay, I put it on my network and uh, I just uh, synchronised it to this time server. I might change it to a Zen one, but this seemed to work correctly. It's at least got the correct time zone and stuff on there. It's all fine, so it looks alright. So I'm happy with that. So I need to figure out a few things with this, obviously. 
outdoor temperature 17 right now wind seems to die down a little bit so what other things are in here relative and absolute measurements you can see me yeah. um, just checking down here only yeah, I'll put it absolute. I think I need to figure out how to set up the weather service. Um, so I think I need to set up some of these. Oh, I don't know, should I do all of them? Obviously I need to have configurations and accounts with all these people. Eco wit. Can I just do that one without anything? State disabled? No, I'll turn it on. Uh, enable. Oh, okay, you have to configure it. Okay, that's a customised one. Customised, see if you've got one which isn't um, pre enabled on here. Okay. Back. Oh, right, customised. Yeah, obvious. Um, was all of them? Yeah, it just wraps around. So, yeah, we'll set these up and get this thing actually working because that'd be quite nice um, don't really need to go into all these things do I? backlight setup, yes yeah, so look at backlight setup as long as she's latitude I'll set that up too but obviously not on camera otherwise you all know where I live don't want that happening turn on the backlight at 6.30 and turn it off at 10 okay so let's where are we? automatic backlight max minimum Okay, let's turn it on. And then I'll adjust these to be lower. So maybe when it's darker, it doesn't need as much backlight brightness. That seems like a plan, doesn't it? Automatic backlight control as well. But then, do you need the backlight during the day when you can see it? Um, hold on. What's the minimum brightness on this thing? So that's minimum brightness. Hmm. I don't know, I'm going to have to decide about this. I wanted to figure out this whole longitude, longitude, uh, was it? Oh, the, the, yeah, the coordinate system. I need to figure out how to set that up for where I am because Google doesn't seem to reference the same system as is in here. Um, I have a geocache stored and that also isn't referenced in that same format, it's a different format. I need to figure out how to um, put my coordinates in here and then set up the mapping stuff on here so it's the um, the weather stations are reported anyway but you can see on here now I've got the Wi-Fi signal showing up and that sort of stuff and it all seems to be working fine so I was tempted to flick through the whole manual and show you that but I'm sure it's online for you to download anyway make sure you go and check the links down below and here's the specs for it in case you want to see those and on the back page as well might be useful for you if you're looking at one of these things so I've had a bit of a play around with this thing now for a day or so and I've been making some good progress understanding how it works and, and it's pretty simple really, it's just not that complicated at all. But um, you know, getting used to the interface and um, using the internet based stuff as well, so it's reporting to Weather Underground, so this is actually reporting my local area weather to Weather Underground. So I'm also the only station in the area, so that makes it pretty good I think, you know, servicing the local community, so that's a nice feature quite happy about that. It works fine. I've got this thing reporting, um, although right now it's saying no because my internet connection has dropped out and I'm just rebooting it. So right now it's saying nothing, but when it's connected you'll see a little WU logo up here. So it's reporting the weather underground. It's so working fine. I've actually mounted the unit properly now. Well, kind of properly. Um, it wasn't clear initially which direction you have to face it in. There is actually a marking on the very top. I didn't notice it initially, but we've got the three arms. Let's just get a picture. A bit easier to describe it then. So this arm here faces north on this particular unit. All right, so the one with this on it. The manual actually says something completely different. Originally I had it facing the wrong way. Um, some of the mounting stuff. Let me show you that. Point the part with the vane and propeller north for correct wind direction measurement. Well, no because that's two different parts for a start so I was like well which one did it actually mean? did I mean that arm generally? so that would face south but no that's what I did originally um, 
and I was getting incorrect wind directions, <laughs> unsurprisingly. So I actually um, realised there's a little marking just over here saying north. So I, that now faces north on this arm, and that's working fine now. So it's now given the correct wind direction measurements, which is good. And um, here we go, you can see my internet's back up again now, you've got the WU logo appeared in the corner. So that's now communicating to whether we underground. It's working well. I've ordered some more sensors. So this is the indoor sensor I've got in right now. I've ordered some more. I've ordered a ground moisture sensor. And I've also ordered two more internal sensors as well. So that means I can check the temperature in a couple of places in the house. More of a thing, because it doesn't really have to be via this. Although obviously it is through this. Um, the actual sensors themselves have got their own display on them, so you can actually just use it as a localised um, temperature measurement, you know, so it's good for that, you know, knowing how warm that room is and that sort of stuff. So I'm going to put a couple of those in the house. Yeah, I suppose I'm going to turn into a bit of a weather nut now, aren't I? Anyway, so yeah, I'm very happy with it. It works well. Um, I might even peel the protective screen off, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> um, I tend to leave the screens on as long as I can until they get messy or so whatever, then I'll, then I'll peel them off. It helps protect it. Alright, so this is the Wonderground website where I have the weather station hooked up and it's sending data to their website. So you can see it's updated here 30 seconds ago at the time I loaded this page. I've zoomed out so you can't see exactly where I am and for obvious reasons. I'm going to be hiding a bit of detail because it does show basically where I live. So I'm making sure that it's all zoomed out and that sort of stuff so you don't see where exactly where. Normally it shows you a much closer view and wind direction stuff like that. And um, Here's some of the basic stats just here. There's not much going on right now. It's, it's getting dark, so it's pretty stale. It's a pretty boring day. Not much going on really. A bit cold, but that's about it. Um, pretty light, light winds and that sort of stuff. The social webcam. I don't have a webcam set up for it, and I won't be setting up for it either. And here is the rest of the page. I did skip a part of the page because it gave the location on it. So this is showing some. Um, statistical data here, you can do either graphing or tables. I haven't looked at tables yet. Um, so here's tables. I prefer the graphs personally. And it shows you the various you know, conditions, you know, temperatures, dew point, wind speed, wind gusts, wind direction, precipitation, um, pressure, solar radiation, and UV index. So there you go, that's what this is coming out on this site. So this is just some of it, I mean, there are other websites you can use which have similar data, um, or possibly even more data, depends on um, on the site really. This unit does send extra data like internal temperatures, stuff like that to it as well, but Wonderground doesn't log those, they think that is a privacy thing, so they don't cover that information. They only cover the external temperature, any, or external sensors. Yes, yeah, the ones inside the house are not logged or anything at all, so it's only the external ones. So yeah, it's pretty good. I, I've been, I've gone from being a bit of a novice on weather to having a bit of an interest in it. I mean, I really, my weather used to be a case of, uh, I'll look out the window and see what's out there. Whereas now I find myself jumping on my phone looking at the weather. Uh, you know, when I'm at work, I'll check the weather out at home, see what's going on. You know, see how hot it is and what the wind direction is doing, that sort of stuff. It's quite interesting. It's almost addicting, really. Um, I never thought I'd be this interested in it. It's actually been quite interesting. I've, I've been quite enjoying it. I mean, I'm, I'm a bit of a nerd, I suppose. I got a weather station, I thought it would be interesting to see what's going on. I didn't realise about the remote networking and that sort of stuff, and actually be able to access it and, and see the data remotely and that sort of stuff, which is even better. You know, that's, that's brilliant, you know. If I'm, I can, if I'm away or at work or whatever, I can see what's going on at home. I can get extra sensors, such as a soil moisture sensor. I've got one of those ordered. That's on its way, hopefully. And some more sensors for inside the house as well. It logs all those things, so it's brilliant. Give us a thumbs up if you like this sort of thing, or you know, make sure you check those links out and have a look. It doesn't have to be this weather station yet, it could be a different one. But, you know, this is a nice one, I really like it. I'm actually really impressed. And it takes quite a bit to impress me. So yeah, I'm very happy with it. So thanks very much Banger for sending that to me. Uh, make sure you check the links out down below. This is a very nice item. Um, there are various vans from this brand, this is obviously Mysol. Um, they've got various modules, or variants of their weather stations, and I actually think this is the nicer looking one at the other so other ones which are like LCD displays and stuff like that but this is a nice I really like this one the backlight you can turn it on off um, you can turn it off like this I think I've demonstrated that before there's also settings in there you can actually set it to turn on off at certain times you can set the backlight levels as well 
So I've got all my backlight control over here. So these weren't turned on by default, so I've turned these on. And I've got it turning on just roughly 8.30 to midday, and it will turn off. So it will turn the screen on at 8.30, and then midday it will turn it back off again. That's basically what we're doing. The default was very different today. I think it was 7.30 to 10 at night or something like that, I think the default was. So it's off overnight. Um, and you can also adjust the backlight brightness levels, maximum minimum levels. And I tend to run things quite gently. I like things to last, so I'm very cautious with them. And so I'll tune things down. You know, you don't need full brightness. I mean, sure, it looks a little bit nicer, full brightness. But this is at this brightness level, and it still looks absolutely fine. It, what it does is it means the backlight is going to last longer. You know, it's just good for it. Also, it reduces the stress on the power supplies, I expect, as well. You know, all these little things just to add up and just like to keep it looking good, you know. Um, I want this to last a long time and without me having to go in and try and fix it. Little things like that just help to prolong the life a little bit more. I tend to look after my gear quite well. You know, I'm very careful with my equipment and bits and pieces like this. I tend to treat things well like that. Anyway, waffling again. So I'm very happy with this thing, it works well. Um, so it's on Weather Underground, it's also on Weather Cloud as well. I've got to set up the Met Service one, the WOW, I've got to set that up yet. Um, I had a problem registering last night, I tried to register on their website, it's actually done via the UK website, even though I'm in New Zealand. And it took me ages to get a password that their site would accept, because your stupid criteria, forgetting the fact that the length of the password is more important than the, than the complex characters you put in. Obviously you have to have some kind of complexity in there, but the longer it is the better. I put in a 20 character password, he wouldn't accept it as well, you know, it's ridiculous. They got the verification email came through, clicked on the link, went to the website to do the verification, and the 404 error. Like, seriously? <laughs> I was not impressed, I sent him a crappy email. Anyway, <laughs> I might try again later on today, I'll have to calm down a bit. So yes, um, I'll get that working at some point, but it will be then on the, on the New Zealand based Metrology website as well, hopefully. If there was another weather station in the area, then I probably wouldn't be so worried about it. But right now, I'm the only one in this direct area, so it's helping people out a little bit, I suppose. Depending on which websites they use. But yeah, I should mention this. We've got a nice antenna signal here. Is that five bars? Four bars? The unit is mounted about probably 30 meters away, and that's just going through a couple of walls and my test gear and you know drawers and god knows what else around here right a lot of electrical noise on this on this wall behind it as well so it's getting a good signal even at that distance so that's not a problem I mean, it does actually say maximum 100 meter range but you know that's usually open space free air kind of thing 30 meters with obstructions the signal's still pretty good it's dropped down to three bars but it's still fine i mean it's it's absolutely fine so that's great so at least i was a bit worried about putting a thing a long distance away thinking that um it might trouble communicating it's fine it's not struggling at all so i recommend you do go and check those links out down below if you're interested in metrology or just trying to monitor what's going on i mean this does graphing and stuff like that um if i remember which one it was on it's in here somewhere so it's got logging in here i haven't put the sd card in yet actually i need to do that and there's graphing as well of various things you can look at different parts So indoor versus outdoor temperatures and all very ha interesting information if you like detail and numbers and so that's a pretty nice unit I'm, I really like it I'm very happy that I chose to get one of these things to do a review on I thought well it's, you know it's a bit of a weird thing to do you know it's not my usual electronics based stuff I'm actually really pleased I got one it's surprising you know I thought it'd be an interesting little thing to have a look at and I was right. Thanks for watching, catch you later, hope you found it interesting. Check out the links down below, subscribe, click the bell icon, all that usual stuff and have a chat down below in the comments. If you've got one of these kinds of things yourself, then please do have a chat down below as well and tell me what you think of yours and you know have a chat about them, you know, what your model number is and how well it performs, how reliable is it, how long the batteries last and the main head units and stuff like that. You know, I want to hear about all these things because I have no experience apart from the little bit I've had the past couple of days. So it's been very interesting. I've been quite enjoying it actually. Catch you later. Give a thumbs up. Bye. So this was uh, delivered to me by...